When it comes to flint napping, a lot of first time nappers, even experienced nappers can run into a variety of problems. And over the years of napping, I've encountered them myself. One problem, I call it the wall or the brick, um, really poses a lot of problems for different nappers. This is how I go about approaching an actual wall in the stone when I'm trying to thin a piece of stone into some sort of bifacial form. But first, what is a wall? A wall is a 90 degree chunk of stone. It looks like a brick. It looks like a, a flat wall. And if your stone is napped with some carelessness, you can run into a significant issue. One of the things that helps eliminate a wall is when your wall is broken down into two points or two edges. As you can see here, I have two platforms that I can start to break stone by alternating the stone through a series of percussive hits. However, sometimes your walls can be pretty significant, just about two inches. You have to remember when we're removing flakes, we're trying to remove flakes to create that biface. Now stone doesn't like to break at a 90 degree angle, but there's a method in which you can manipulate your stone and manipulate your strike to actually thin this stone out, thinning the wall layer by layer, as well as creating a new series of platforms through your strikes to ultimately thin that stone out. Walls can be huge. Even though I have this small platform here, it can still be difficult to thin this out. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use this stone to try to formulate into a biface. I might use this platform here and drive flakes off of it and turn it into a core, but this is a huge chunk of stone. So even when I'm going after this guy, I still have two kind of tapered out edges that I could use as platforms to try to not run flakes this way into the stone, but run flakes this way into the stone to give myself a thinner edge to then run flakes across the stone. So if I'm hit with a soft billet, I'm trying to drive my flakes this way, not so much this way into the stone. I wanna drive them into the stone this way to try to shrink my wall down. If I drive it this way, and I'm trying to focus my flake scar to go here, I'm gonna create a thicker wall with a harder angle and platform to actually try to reduce it. So let me show you how you do it wrong. In my mind, I wanna go this way. I'm always trying to thin, always trying to thin. If I hit my biface this way, yes, I remove the flake, but the problem is now, when I think about my previous platform, if I would have hit more into the stone, trying to target this area, instead of targeting underneath, I would have gotten a little bit bigger flake. Let's aim this strike going into the stone. There we go. Let's see if we can replace that a little bit right there. So there's a little bit of replacement. By doing this, I've set up another platform to come this way. And you can see just by replacing that, that's where my stone was. So now I've removed a little bit from my top, reduced the thickness of my wall, and it's set me up over here. Let's do another strike, aiming this way into the stone. A little steep, but... There we go. See how majority of my flake rode this way, tapered out right here because it was going uphill, ran into that cortex, but I'm keeping a working platform to address my back and forth strikes to reduce my wall down. Shooting a flake into the stone, not underneath it, into this wall. There we go. That's my break. You'll see, piece by piece, I'm removing here, a little bit here, but I'm giving myself more of a vantage to taking the flakes off of my actual wall. I've set myself up here. This one I'm gonna try and drive all the way to the other side. There we go. See that pop? Struck into the stone this way, remove that big flake right there. Now this is all I'm dealing with. This one, I'll be able to pop this mass off. I'll be good to go. So on this one, since I'm holding it in my hand, I've kind of got majority of my mass below the center line. 
I'm coming this way with it. Right there, more of the mass removed, and I'm creating a nice little wave. One more little piece, I'm hold on my leg, and I'm gonna pop down into it. There we go. What I've done is I've taken that entire wall that was here and I've given myself a nice working edge. I've got a platform here, one here, reinforce this with another platform. And now this gives me the ability to retarget my stone to the inside. They were along my wall. Now I'm shooting them back in. You can see how much farther that flake went from there all the way to there. So let's take a look at an actual build as I'm doing a Bedarian knife of the wall that I run into and the same concepts I apply when trying to reduce it down and give myself a better platform. This presents kind of a struggle for some folks when you have straight, almost like box. When I have a nice flat surface like this, it's flat here, it's flat here, it's flat here, so almost two 90 degree angles, I need to try to take this stone and give it more of a wavy edge like this. Now how I do this is I'm going to be alternating the stone back and forth. I'm going to lose some of my mass on this side. But as I'm creating my wave on this side, it's gonna give me an opportunity to throw thinning flakes. How I do it is I attack this down the lateral edges. So I try and throw long flakes from this platform here, from there, from there, and then from there. We'll take my stone wall as you see it and shrink it down to about right there, and then I can just pop it off. First hit, it's prepared, there we go. So when I came in at that angle, I struck here with my direction of travel coming this way. And I was trying to just reduce as much of this wall down while still drawing a flake. And that's the result. Instead of hitting the stone straight up and down, I came in at an angle to create that bulb of percussion right here this one little shard popped out. Everything is put back in place. You can see a line right here. That's really creating that bulb and it's blowing out this bottom flake. And it's given me now an opportunity to come back and do the exact same thing this way. So give it a grind. That right there is my platform. So this one I'm gonna kind of slap it a little bit, but I'm gonna come down with it. Took off that flake right there, and I'm starting to create my little wave pattern. This will be my next spot. Good, flake kind of broke up. You can see my flake scar traveled into the stone and then reduced my edge. Let's do another one. The billet. Let's get the side of it with the billet. Good. All right, and just looking at it now, you can see creating that wave behind it. And this is my wall. My wall used to extend out to about right here, and I've reduced it in size immensely without creating a lot of problems. So it's about striking towards you, striking away from you trying to use this flat edge and the little platforms you create as your, your direction of travel, your, the, the direction you want to hit that stone and remove. Going this way, tilt up. Took the whole chunk right off, perfect. You gotta understand, if you're coming to these flat faces, if you're hitting the stone down, you're just gonna be taking off little chips side to side. But when you come at an angle, it puts the mass of your stone in this place 
instead of underneath. Because you remember, when you strike, you're trying to remove flakes from this bifacial form. But when I tilt my stone and I come at this angle, I'm kind of now saying, I'm no longer gonna be hitting this stone, I'm going for this stone. So a little bit of an angle, different direction of strike, and you can pop off the piece. I've got a nice wavy edge full of platforms, and I am good to go. So that's it when you're dealing with a wall or a brick. If you think about your stone and removing mass, trying to thin it this way by throwing strikes in this direction, instead of over your stone, you're throwing it into that mass, you'll decrease your wall, giving you a better opportunity to throw some thinning flakes, ultimately getting a piece of stone down into that bifacial form. All right, that's an insider trick for when you are dealing with bricks and walls and stone. Appreciate you watching.